Why Read? An Essay by Name Chaibidi. Robinson Crusoe. Gulliver's Travels. Pride and Prejudice. Alice in Wonderland. For centuries, mankind has been fascinated and captivated by the novel, a book that tells a fictional story in prose narrative. But that's just what these stories are. Fictional. Technically speaking, reading such stories serves us no purpose nor helps us accomplish any outside task. All we're actually doing is encouraging the deceit of the writer, who dares to present us with a book that is not real. How practical is reading? Why do people keep reading packs of lies, filled with characters and events that have been fabricated, existing neither here nor there? Maybe it is something to do with imagination. Books try to show us a situation different than our own. This situation involves a setting, characters, and some kind of conflict between them. These situations catch our interest, and we read on to find out more about them. The setting is the environment in which the book takes place, and is often instrumental to the feel of the world. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins has a setting in a post-American world, filled with poverty and strife. This environment fills us with longing, and an emotion, an emotion totally different from comfort, which would result if the novel took place in a candy land. Characters are the people that inhabit the setting, and are the things focused on in a book. The Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling is filled with dozens and dozens of characters, each with different goals, personality quirks, and even appearances. The interaction between characters sparks character development, comedy, and especially conflict. Conflict is the point or points of contention, problems that arise in the story. Let's face it, if there's nothing wrong, nothing desired, or nothing missing, then there is no story. And without a story to spark our imagination, the reader then realizes he's reading no worth, nothing worth his time, and the novel isn't read. Emma by Jane Austen is a character drama, pulling its conflict from the emotion, sorry, uh, pulling its conflict from the contention of its many characters. The unease between members of the cast entices the reader to continue out of curiosity as to how it will resolve. As you can see, setting inspires character, character inspires conflict, and conflict inspires story or plot. So even though we're being fed lies, our human imagination entertains these ideas in an attempt to get something out of them. But what if the setting is poorly described, or the characters are not well defined, the conflict is badly handled? Whether or not a good plot exists comes down to the talent of the writer. He has to make sure that the setting, the characters, and the conflict he has created are developed accordingly. This involves writing good descriptions, dialogue, and pacing. If these three things are not done well, then the reader will abandon the book. Whether or not a... Oh, Paragraph. <laughs> Descriptions are very difficult to pull off. If done correctly, then the personifications, similes, and metaphors will go unnoticed by the reader. But if done incorrectly, then the attempt towards greatness will stick out of place like a sore thumb and will only be a block. The Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien effortlessly puts forth beautiful landscapes and is complemented further by the maps that the author drew. Dialogue is the communication between characters. Characters can talk with each other or talk with themselves, but either scenario must feel natural in some way or another in order to please a reader and make him believe in the story that the author is creating. John Green's The Fault in Our Stars is a fantastic example, delivering intelligent repartee between all of his characters. Pacing is the last element to watch for, having everything to do with conflict. Sometimes it's tough to decide between moving on to the next important event or taking a break to develop other parts of the book. The former risks the reader becoming exhausted, and the latter risks the reader becoming bored. Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis is a good example of bad pacing. It spends most of its time setting up for a climactic fight that is over in minutes, and then the novel ends. Because there are so many things that can go wrong in the making of a good novel, the talent of the writer is essential. He can have an illustrious setting, brilliant characters, and an exciting conflict, but if he cannot expertly convey his vision to his readers, then they will not read it. However, we still haven't discussed why people continue to read and what they get out of it. So here's the answer. The thing that people get out of reading, the purpose that humanity has for telling stories, is to share basic 
truths, despite the lies that surround them. These truths can be seen as life lessons, morals to live by. They can promote a good quality, one against a bad quality, or explore concept of our world. Some good qualities that a book might teach us include the concepts of faith, hope, or love, persistence and friendship, or others. No matter what the virtue, this kind of novel often promotes it by rewarding a character for living it out. The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo is a novel that promotes bravery, as displayed by Despero, and does loyalty to Princess P. Happy endings in these kinds of stories promise that good wins out, and if we were to be like this, then our lives would be happier. But not all authors are interested in such happy trails. Some, like William Golding, D William Golding delve into gloomier subjects like violence among humans in Golding's book, The Lord of the Flies. Terrible events and results happen from terrible behavior, warning mankind to stay well away from these actions if they do not want to reach the level of savagery as the marooned boys do in this novel. Other books are not concerned with morals per se, but are more focused on exploring social situations or other factors of the outside world. Fahrenheit 451, a novel by Ray Bradbury, imagines and examines a world without books and explores the concept of people keeping others away from knowledge. Such novels are very interesting and inspire much thought even months after finishing them. The ideas and morals focused on in a book are often one of the few things a reader will remember after having finished it. The theme will evoke emotion into a reader, and that lasting impression will make him remember the experience and possibly inspire thoughts and ideas of his own. That is why we read. An author uses his imagination to put forth setting, characters, and plot. Then he uses his talent to convey g descriptions, dialogue, and pacing, all in order to showcase an idea. This idea, being good, bad, or otherwise, has a goal of making an impression on the reader, making him want to read more. As human beings, we desire to learn. And learning means finding truths. And many of the truths most necessary for our lives can be found in the novel. Yes despite the fact that it's presented in a pack of lies. I'll see you guys later.